In this GY6 video, we're going to be taking a look at the automatic choke, or also known as the enricher. This part is located on the carburetor in this location here. It goes inside that hole. There's two screws that hold it in position. This is the side of the carburetor where the mixture screw is located. This is your air intake where the larger hose goes. And this goes into the intake manifold elbow. Now the purpose of the automatic choke or the enricher is to adjust the ratio of the fuel-air mixture for the idle circuit. You want it to start easier and it's going to run at a faster RPM until the engine warms up a little bit and then what's going to happen this whole plunger assembly here with the point on the end is going to extend. When it extends it's going to seal the hole right in the bottom of that well you can see in there where there's a little brass fitting it's going to seal that off. Now if you look at that little port right there in the wall that goes straight through you can see it angles in goes into that little nub where it's molded and gets drawn into the carburetor. Once the plunger is fully extended you'll hear the engine's RPM slow down and that's usually after the engine starts up you wait about a minute or two you will hear that engine slow down. If you start up your engine and you're having a lot of trouble or after you start it up you notice that the engine maintains a certain speed and the idle will not come down usually that would indicate an issue with your enricher or your automatic choke. So we're now going to take a look at the automatic choke and test it. Now to do the test I have my power supply set at around 12.6 volts which is right around the voltage of your battery when it's fully charged. Under this cover you just spread it apart and then you can pull that out that's the whole thing. It's all sealed tight for water. There's an O-ring right here. It's a good idea to put a little bit of silicone grease. You can get it at a hardware store. It comes in a little container. Put a thin film when you slide it back into the carburetor. Now this is very flexible on the end. It moves around. It goes in and out. It's springy. So the reason for that springiness the plunger is going to extend. You want to make sure that this has play because once it seats, that plunger still might want to keep moving. And that's why you have that play in there like that. Now when this is in the fully retracted position, when you start up the scooter, right before current is applied to this unit you see here, the measurement is roughly from the face to the tip, approximately three quarters of an inch around 19 millimeters plus or minus a couple of millimeters is fine now once the engine turns on this is going to slowly push outward so I'm going to connect the power now to the power supply I'm going to let this sit just like that let me shore this up like that let me zoom in a little closer Move up a hair Now you're going to look at the space between this bottom plastic edge and the brass. You're going to see this needle gradually move up. Here we go. Right now you started your scooter up. It's idling fast and this plunger is slowly moving. Keep looking and you will see a space start to form between the brass and the plastic. Right now you should be able to see. What I'm going to do now in the video is just speed it up and you could look at this as it's being sped up.
All right, as you can see, it's now fully extended on this one. We're talking right around 23.5 millimeters. Now, even though it went out that far, because it was way in, you're not going to need it to go all the way out before that hole seals. It might seal right there. And then this rod, the plastic rod on the inside, will just keep pushing that spring to hold this firmly inside the well. Takes mine on average around one minute before I see the idle start to drop down. And this took about two minutes to get all the way out. Now I'm going to take a look at the resistance measurement between these two wires. So you know you can check it with the voltage to confirm it's working properly. Now let's take a look at the resistance. Now it's normal for the automatic choke to get very warm as current is flowing through it. So if yours is getting warm or very warm, don't worry about it. We're now going to check the resistance of these two wires leading into the unit one wire on each terminal inside the connector, one here, and the other one here. Alright, as, as you can see it tests around 14.3 ohms. That reading will vary between chokes and the range that I've seen is between 10 ohms and 30 ohms. So if it passes the test between 10 and 30 ohms. If the plunger goes all the way out, once current's applied, then there should be no issue with the automatic choke. Now the length of time it takes for this plunger to go all the way out and stop is around two minutes. If you find that yours takes a lot longer than the two minutes, then it's possible there's a problem with the unit. More than likely you should replace it. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you.